Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. Here's something to think about. Water heaters warm up hundreds of gallons of water, but somehow the steel doesn't immediately rust. Well, you have the anode rod to thank for that. Like a lightning rod, the anode attracts the corrosive elements in the water, sacrificing itself to protect the tank. Overall, it's best to replace the anode before it becomes too corroded and can no longer protect the tank. Most anode rods will last four to six years, but this depends on the pH and purity of the water. In this episode, we'll learn how the anode rod works, how to choose a replacement, and how to install it. The hot water inside a water heater contains minerals and other dissolved particles, creating a perfect environment for corrosion to take place. The tanks are coated with a thin glass lining to protect the inside metal walls. This lining doesn't always cover 100% of the tank and can also become cracked over time. Fortunately, the anode will corrode first, preventing any exposed iron from rusting. As it's slowly eaten away, a scale is formed over top. Both the scale and the sediment in the water will build up on the bottom of the tank. This acts as an insulator which reduces the efficiency of the water heater. This is why it's important to flush the tank every year as part of regular maintenance. During maintenance, check the rod to monitor how much corrosion has taken place. If you can see the bare steel core, or if the rod is completely encased with calcium, then the anode will have to be replaced. When choosing an anode rod, you'll come across several different types. Aluminum rods are the most common and are factory installed in a lot of tanks. On the other hand, magnesium rods are safer for drinking water but might not last as long. Most anodes will be installed in the middle of the tank. Other rods are integrated into the hot water outlet. It's a little more involved to replace these, so it's best to call the technician. To begin, you'll need a 1 and 1 16th inch socket, a half inch drive socket wrench, a breaker bar, a screwdriver, and needle nose pliers. You'll also need a bucket, Teflon tape, and a wire brush. If you have an electric water heater, then shut off the power at the breaker. For gas water heaters, turn the gas supply off or perpendicular to the pipe. Now set the water heater to the pilot setting and turn the gas control off. Next, shut off the cold supply. Keep in mind that the water inside the tank is still hot, so use caution when draining or accessing the tank. First, open a hot water faucet in the house. This will let in air and relieve pressure in the system. Place a bucket underneath the drain valve. Open the valve to drain several gallons of water. This will reduce the pressure in the tank. Ideally, you want to leave most of the water in the tank as the weight will keep it from sliding around. The anode rod is sometimes under a plastic cover. If you haven't checked it in years, it might be stuck in place and will be difficult to remove. To prevent the tank from shifting, you can use a piece of wood to stabilize the tank. Alternatively, you can get another person to help support it. To get it started, you'll need to increase the torque. One way is to use a breaker bar. Additionally, you can use a copper pipe as an extension or snipe. Once the nut is starting to spin, then you should be able to use a regular socket wrench to unscrew it. Now use the needle nose pliers to remove the anode rod.
To get a good seal, it's best to clean up the threads with a wire brush. Next, apply the Teflon tape. This will help seal the threads and make it easier to remove and check the rod. Looking at the threads, tape is always applied in a clockwise direction so that the tape stays on when tightened. Wrap three to six times, keeping it tight the whole way through. Leave the last part of the thread bare to prevent any tape from breaking off into the tank. Now screw the nut into place until it is hand tight. Finally, use the socket wrench to tighten it into place. First, double check that there's a hot water faucet open in the house. Now open the cold water supply to fill the tank. Check the faucet. You should hear the air being pushed out of the system. Close the faucet once you get a smooth stream of water. This will tell you that the tank is full and the air has been removed. If you have an electric water heater, turn on the power at the breaker. For gas water heaters, turn on the gas and relight the pilot. To see how to relight the pilot, watch the video linked below. Hopefully this has helped you install a new anode rod. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an Avery location to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.